always begin Wednesday nights with the Lord be with you. So uh, we welcome Pam as our guest tonight, our host, and she's going to be the response. But you can join at home with a loud, thundering response. Let's show them how it's done. The Lord be with you. And also... Amen. We have room tonight for other members of the choir. You'll have to join us from your home as we all gather and sing. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, as you know, uh, we are still not able to gather in person for those wonderful Wednesday night dinners, but we've got a brand new way to engage. It's going to be interactive. It's going to let you participate. Every week we'll have a new host family. And that host family will be given some opportunities to do some really fun things with us. This is Jake's first night to be in a Wednesday night gathering. So we'll have to try to uh, provide a Peter Pan style imagination creation for the wonderful food and everything else that takes place. But again, uh, we're going to have some fun and it's really cool because it's going to be interactive. Now, we should say that tonight is a practice run. So if you happen to join us, uh, we welcome you. But just know that we're trying to figure this out. We've never done this before. So you're part of making history. And if we have some bumps along the way, then, uh, then just roll with that with us. We appreciate that. I'm going to invite Jake to share a couple things about how this works. Yeah, thanks, Steve, for that. Uh, my name is Jake Heskett. I am the new associate pastor here at Faith United and excited to be a part of Wednesday Night Faith Connections. Uh, just so you know, you can interact with us, and we are hoping that you will. Uh, use the Facebook comment feed or the YouTube comment feed. Uh, there's also a chat feature on YouTube that you can utilize so that you can comment in real time uh, so that we can respond to you. We're hoping that this will be a more interactive format for all of us to be together on Wednesday nights. When we can't be together in person, we can still be together in this way. So thanks for joining us and please make use of that uh, feature, the comment feed. In just a little while, we're going to have a uh, devotion led by Kathy, and there will be a question for us to respond to. And we invite you to respond to that question in the comment feeds of both Facebook and YouTube. Awesome. Thank you, Jake. And, um, <clears throat> you know, we're not, uh, we're, as I said before, we're not used to doing stuff live. We've gotten accustomed to uh, pre-recorded services for Sunday, which lets us kind of mess up and start all over again, delete and edit. Uh, so this is the real deal. We're being real, but it already kind of feels like the real thing on Wednesday night. And for that, I'm really excited. So the song I'm going to start with, and I invite you to sing along. It's very easy for you to catch up uh, on the words there. Um, is Father, we adore you. And you'll recall from Kathy's uh, spiritual uh, uh, practice 101 this past Sunday, uh, she talked about praying to Abba, how in the Lord's Prayer, God prayed to Abba, Father, which really translates to Daddy. It's meant to be a very intimate thing. So when we think of Father here, I invite you to think of some of those reflections from last Sunday. Father, we adore you. Lay our hearts before you. How we Jesus, we adore you. Lay our hearts before you. How we love you. All right, you're getting it. That's the Spirit. It's like a prayer. Spirit, we adore you. Lay our hearts before you. Kathy, when do we do our opening prayer? Is that now, or I don't see that in our lineup? You may pray right now, Steve. Well, what about our host family? Can we ask? Can we ask our host family to pray right now? You can, of course. <laughs> you can, but I will. We have to give you the big microphone, though, Pam. You know? Oh, that's right. Okay. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Let us pray. Father God, Abba, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to worship you, 
to be together in new ways, um, knowing that you are with us, knowing that you're in the midst of all of this. Father, we thank you, we praise you, we glorify your name in all that we think, do, and say. Be with us as we charter or yeah, charter new waters and, and try new things. It's because of you that we can do this. Thank you, Lord, for all the blessings that you have given each one of us today and every day. In your name I pray, amen. Amen. Would you give the mic to Kathy now, please? Yes, here you go, Kathy. I got it. <laughs> On Wednesday, on Wednesday evenings of spring, we added a new um, part of our Wednesday night faith connections, and that is to share our God sightings, where we see God at work in the world. For those who don't know me, my name is Kathy Schmucker, and I'm the spiritual formation director at Faith United, and I would love to hear um, how you see God at work um, over the last few days. Um, we sometimes call this practicing the presence of God. Um, so I'm going to invite um, those who are with us on Zoom that if you want to get started by sharing a God sighting, and then we'll invite um, those of you who are on Facebook and YouTube, you can comment your God sighting. Where do you see God at work? Amy, Pam? Yeah. There. Can you hear me? You can. Okay. I see God every morning when I go out to get my paper and I look up into the skies and I see the moon and the stars and I know that, um, you know, that he is with us, with me, um, and it, it just gives me peace. Awesome. Anybody else have a God sighting, Amy? Sam, you're getting up early. <laughs> um, I, I see God all the time when I look at my kids and um, I see how they are growing. Um, and um, just as a proud mom, I, you know, I'm very, very proud of my kids this year, especially in the midst of the pandemic and how they have um, grown and stretched and they set an example for me all the time. And so um, I, you know, just uh, the father heart of God, I think, you know, when we talk about Abba, looking at my own children with a mothering heart, I think I, I really get a sense of, of who God is and, and how he cares for us. That is beautiful. Any other God sightings? I was just going to share last uh, Monday, a week ago, Karen and I went down to Canal Fulton and uh, took a walk down the biker towpath. <clears throat> and um, and uh, we saw some flowers that had some butterflies, although they may have been moss. Kathy would be the one to know. Um, but I was able to take some pictures of those. And, and then I, and Kara had a meeting for about an hour. So I just wandered around and, and got to just take a whole hour to just sort of discover where God might be. And I found this flower, just basically a weed, but there was a wasp that was on that flower and it posed for me the entire hour. It just kept doing these different kinds of poses and different angles and it would look at me and, and I, I took about 120 pictures, man, <laughs> but it was, uh, it's really cool when you look up close and see, you know, these kinds of detailed creations all around. It's just amazing. We have a comment. It is amazing. We have Go a, ahead, Jake. Yeah. We have a comment from Sue Weaver uh, who says, God watches over you no matter where you are. Uh, Sue, I think that's an incredible reminder. Thanks for, for pointing that out. God is always with us. Uh, Rebecca Heskett also uh, has commented saying, mine is similar to Amy's God sighting. I see God's beautiful creation in my babies, learning to crawl, learning to talk, giving kisses, giving hugs. Awesome. And, um, tonight as we get ready to hear Pam share our scripture reading, um, that's one of my favorite scriptures, and it's a real joy for me to be sitting outside tonight. Um, if you hear some noise, those are my God sightings. Um, the dogs barking, the wind blowing, uh, there's a neighbor who's mowing his lawn, and it's just so beautiful to see so much activity in God's creation. So at this time, um, you can continue to share your God sightings. We want to hear from you in the comments. Um, and as we continue to invite you to do that, I'm going to invite Pam to um, share our scripture, which was from this past Sunday's service, from Psalm 139.
Pam, you're on mute. Oh, come on. There we go. Psalm 139 <laughs> verses 1 through 6 and 13 through 18. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all of my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in, behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my, un my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them as yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of all of them. I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end. I am still with you. Thank you, Pam. Beautiful words, a beautiful reminder um, of God's love for us and how God moves in and through each and every one of us. Um, those words, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. I hope that you know those as your own words claim that as you are God's beloved child. So this past Sunday in the second sermon in our prayer se series, Pastor Jake um, walked us through this psalm, and this was just a small portion, portion of the psalm that Pam shared with us. So I'll invite you to read the psalm in its entirety to hear more of God's wonderful words. But Pastor Jake helped us to see how Psalm 139 was also a way to, for us to um, reflect on a model of prayer called the prayer of examen. So I would encourage you to um, just Dig into that a little bit deeper. Read those words, claim them for your own, and think about God's love for you as we hear those beautiful words. As we are reflecting from these passages from Psalm 139, I wonder um, if any of you would like to share our reflection question for tonight. What can we learn about prayer and God's love for us through Psalm 139? So I'll invite any of you um, on Zoom with us to share, and we can open it up to the comments on Facebook and, and YouTube as well. What can we learn from Psalm 139 about prayer and God's love? Amy? Yeah, so I, I love the Psalm. I think that most of us do. Um, and I think that one thing that we can learn about prayer is that God already knows our hearts. So, you know, I think so many times we think we have to, you know, have a rehearsed prayer or something really, you know, perfect and polished and, you know, really in actuality, God already knows what we're thinking. He knows it before we think it. He knows it before we even had a thought to think it. And um, that is so powerful. Um, it shows that we don't have to come to God polished. We can come to him just as we are. And, um, you know, King David, who wrote this, had some, you know, pretty crazy things that he did in his life. And yet he was able to say, you know, I'm, I'm knit together. I'm wonderfully created. And, and God knows everything about me. And I think that's just really, really beautiful that we can approach God um, no matter what and no matter where from no matter where we're coming from. Beautiful thoughts. I know when we um, lost our babies, this, this scripture was very comforting to me um, because as I struggled to figure out, I lost my babies so, so young and so early in the pregnancy in the second trimester. Were they, was, was I a mom? What am I? And these words spoke deeply to me that God knew our babies and, um, and held them in his arms and I can continue to carry them in my heart because um, they are God's. They are God's children, and their lives did matter, no matter how short they were. Any other thoughts about um, Psalm 139 and what we can learn about prayer and God's love for us? I think it tells us to thank him because he doesn't make junk. 
He made us wonderfully. He made us in his image. He made us whole. He made us to, to glorify him. What else could we want? I love the part in there where it says, no matter where I go, uh, you, you are there. Even if I make my bed in Sheol, the underground, uh, even there, you are present. And we know that we make mistakes and we sometimes drive ourselves into the ground. And it's wonderful news to know. I loved uh, Jake's reference to the runaway bunny. In fact, uh, uh, I don't know why, but Kara bought this just fresh. I think she's going to give it to somebody. I'm not sure who. And it was independent of Jake's reference to that. And, uh, and I just love that idea of God being unstoppable. We do have a comment uh, from John Hartzell on the Facebook feed who says uh, that it means pray from our heart. Uh, I think that connects a lot with what Amy was saying. Uh, you know, God already knows what we need and God already knows who we are. So simply open up and pray from the heart. It's beautiful. Well, please continue to share your thoughts and your reflections about this um, beautiful passage and our, our message from this past Sunday. And as I invite you to continue to do that, um, Pastor Steve and Pastor Jake are going to share some upcoming ways of how you can continue to grow in on um, the practice of prayer and understanding God's love for us. Yeah, so I'm really, really excited to uh, just um, remind folks, if you didn't know already, this past Sunday, we unveiled a new opportunity every Sunday, and that is Spiritual Practices 101. And that will be uh, an opportunity for you to get to know Kathy in her role as our Director of Spiritual Formation for adults. You get to see her do her children's message and all kinds of things, BBS and things like that. But, but she's a phenomenal leader for spiritual practices. And every Sunday, uh, especially during this season when we're doing our prayer uh, series, uh, we're going to be including the spiritual practices. So if you didn't get to see that, you can uh, go there on our website and see that. And each week you can look forward to that. Yeah, and part of that um, ongoing spiritual formation work, a big part of Kathy's job is helping groups to organize and to plan uh, for fall groups, uh, which are underway. One of them, or maybe a couple of them, are even starting tonight. Uh, Kathy, what should we know about fall groups this year? Well, I think it's really exciting how our group leaders have gotten very creative to find ways to help all of us stay connected, even though we can't be in person. So I would just encourage you to either visit the website to learn about all the different opportunities or even in Realm. If you're connected to the congregation through Realm, you can find groups um, in there as well. Just go look, see about the wide variety available and get connected. Absolutely. Um, uh, we also want to share with you that uh, you know, during this pandemic with the building not being available for in-person gatherings and use, it's been an opportunity for our trustees and our custodians to do some really great things. And just this week, they've been, re they've been painting a fresh coat of paint on our Robinson hallway and the, uh, the hallway to our Sunday school rooms. And uh, maybe next week, I'll show you some pictures as they, as they finish that up. And finally, I think we'll just announce that uh, we are, you know, you may be used to seeing our weekly update video, and this is going to be uh, the new weekly update video. So you can join us live on Wednesday night, uh, but we'll also be broadcasting by email and links to YouTube, uh, a video of this, this, this entire experience. So this will be our weekly update. It'll be available tomorrow morning, Thursday mornings. That's our goal each week. I, I do uh, want to, go ahead. can I add one more thing? Um, next Wednesday is our official launch of our Wednesday night faith connection. So we are practicing tonight, but along with that, um, we are also going to have a Zoom group for kids where they can get to know Jake and Amy. Maybe you want to share a little bit about the youth Zoom because that will also be happening for the first time next Wednesday. 
Yeah, so I am so excited to have a weekly connection that is not simply just my recording, which we will continue that um, through the duration of this um, until we can meet fully in person. But I'm really excited to start our youth Zoom meeting, which will be next um, Wednesday night at 6.30, right after our Wednesday night connections. And I just, I hope that we can have as many youth as, as um, we can, because I love to connect with them and I, I really miss seeing them on a regular basis. So I'm really looking forward to that. We're going to be going through a series called From, uh, From Fear to Peace, which I feel like is really going to be a, an amazing study. And Emily Jacobs, who is an incredible volunteer at our church, is going to be helping with teaching that. So um, I think you'll miss out if you don't get to be a part of that if you're a youth. So um, if you have any questions about that, you can, you can always email me and, um, and you can find that out through the website as well. So hopefully they can all be a part of that. And that'll happen on Wednesdays, like starting right after our, our live time here at 6.30 or so? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Starting next Wednesday night. Great. Jake, did you, did you give any specs, uh, did you tell at all about the classes that you're beginning to lead and starting next week? I didn't know. So um, I am starting a Life Together class uh, this Sunday at 9.30. That's uh, by Dietrich Bonhoeffer. It's uh, the subtitle is a classic exploration of the Christian faith. So we'll be talking about community, about prayer, about worship, about having a day that's set apart, um, a variety of things in that class. And then starting on the 23rd, I'll be leading a class on the book White Fragility uh, by Robin DiAngelo. Uh, you may have heard of that. If not, I encourage you to, to look that up. I don't have time to go into the whole book tonight. Uh, but I encourage you to, to look into that book. It's the subtitle for that one uh, is why it's so hard for white people to talk about racism. Uh, so I encourage you to, to look at both of those and to sign up for a group this fall. And all of those groups are, are meeting by Zoom interface. Is that right? My group is meeting by Zoom. Yeah. Amy, yours is Zoom. Okay. And if people and need the help. Kids, the kids. Yeah, the kids will be meeting by Zoom next Wednesday, and most of the adult groups, there's one or two that are meeting outdoors, but most will be meeting by Zoom. It's been neat to see some of our folks who have never used computer technology for that kind of thing. For the, for the most part, including myself, until the pandemic, I, I only done maybe three or four Zooms in my life. So it's been neat to see how we've been able to uh, build that bridge and cross across. Um, one last question, Kathy. What, what if... Um, you know, we would always talk about on Wednesday night that it's kind of our best kept secret and, and really trying to keep it a secret. We really don't want this to get out. And now that we're doing it live and online, what's going to happen? I mean, what if people start to share with others and, and invite people? Is that, I mean, what, what do you want people to know? Well, it would be kind of scary, especially if tonight's episode gets shared a lot. Um, <laughs> people will learn that we are not perfect. Uh, maybe that's a good thing. Um, but who knows? Our Wednesday night connect faith connections could travel around the world, and we're just about sharing God's love and having fun and enjoying each other's um, company and hearing how God's at work in our lives. So that wouldn't be too bad, I guess, if it got out. <laughs> so all kidding aside, we encourage you, uh, share the good news, to let others know about this uh, opportunity. This is our midweek worship experience, and it's a different way that we're engaging. So is it time for our host prayer? It is. <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for the way you made each one of us wonderfully and individually, and yet we need community. Father, you are in our hearts, you are in our lives, and you know everything about us. Continue to guide and direct us in our thoughts, words, and deeds. Father, you, you are all that we need. Um, through this hard time. And yet we need each other. We know that. But Lord, just continue to hold us in your hands. You're, we know our, our names are written on the palms of your hands. You've got us, Lord. All we need to do is let go and let God. We love you, Lord. We worship you. We praise you. We adore you. In your name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Pam. And I'll put a plug in for any family out there that would like to sign up to be our, one of our host families. Uh, send an email to Kathy. We're trying to get those scheduled uh, from now through the end of the year, really. So um, I want to welcome Atticus. He's going to scooch on over. Many of you uh, out there, I think most of you know Atticus, and uh, he's been helping us 
from time to time when he wasn't having to go to school uh, with our singing on Sunday sometimes with our hymns. So he's going to help me sing this song, uh, Go in Peace. We were using this back in the spring as well, so I hope that you might remember this. The words are simply, go in peace, go in kindness, go in love, go in faith. Leave the day, the day behind us. Day is done, go in grace. And uh, the other words will fall into place. But what I love is that it ends with this line, let us hope by some good pleasure safely to arrive at home. The book that we've been using for our uh, sermon series on prayer uh, opens up with an analogy about prayer as going home. And that when we really engage in prayer, it's a way for us to find our true home. So let us keep that in mind as we uh, sing this. Go in peace, go in kindness, go in love, go in faith, leave the day, the day behind us, day is done, go in grace, let us go into the dark, not afraid, not alone, let us hold. By some good pleasure, safely to arrive at home. Let us hope, by some good pleasure, safely to arrive at home. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.